Today we begin the first of three talks dealing mainly with the planet Mars, a planet rich in legend and fable and tradition on this planet, and a planet about which we have recently in the last few years discovered an astonishing amount of new information. But I would like to begin not with Mars, but with a discussion of the nearest planet to the Earth, Venus. Venus, remember, is covered with clouds. We cannot, if we go to a telescope such as this, or a much larger telescope, look through it and see any features on the surface of Venus. If I look through a telescope of this sort, which is uh, a sort of typical 19th century telescope. Of course, usually they were not inside rooms, but in observatories, so you could look out. Actually, this is pointed out the window in the back of the Royal Institution, and I can see upside down Dent and Company across the street. Um, were Dent and Company not in the way, I could probably see some overcast in the London sky. Uh, on the rare occasions when the overcast were gone and uh, it was night, I uh, could see whatever tiny portion of the sky was in that little patch. Now, if you were to use such a telescope, this one is about uh, four inches aperture, the diameter of the lens is four inches across. If you use a telescope like this, or a bigger one, say with an aperture or objective of that size, on reasonably clear days, you could make out Venus as a disk going through phases shimmering, silvery, enigmatic, interesting. Prolonged scrutiny would reveal no details at all. Observers in the 18th and 19th century used the fact that you couldn't see anything on Venus to deduce all sorts of interesting information about Venus. Uh, the argument went like this. My goodness, I can't see a thing. Why can't I see a thing? Venus must be covered with clouds. What are clouds made out of? Water, everybody knows that. Well, there must be a lot of water on Venus. Uh, if there's a lot of water up in the atmosphere, then there must be a lot of water on the ground. Uh, maybe there are swamps on Venus. And from there, it was but a short step to a Venus uh, populated by dinosaurs and covered with ferns and like the Earth of a few hundred million years ago. Now, we all recognize that this argument, which was, by the way, presented by a Nobel laureate, is uh, weak. And uh, in fact, Venus is not covered, so far as we know, with swamps, ferns, or dinosaurs. But it indicates to us that uh, astronomers are human like everybody else. And uh, no matter how little data there is, they will uh, find it irresistible to make guesses, or as they're sometimes called, hypotheses, about what the planets are like. As more data comes in, the range of speculation that's possible shrinks until eventually there comes one fine day when there is only one possible explanation of the data. In the case of Venus, what happened was that in 1956, American observers with a large radio telescope found to their astonishment that Venus was giving off very intense radio radiation. Not a radio station, but a so-called thermal spectrum. It was noise. But it seemed to indicate that somewhere on Venus, things were pretty hot. Was it in the atmosphere, clouds, high up in the ionosphere, on the surface? Where did the heat come from? A set of observations, including observations by the first spacecraft to fly by another planet, Mariner 2, in 1962, showed that the emission was coming from the surface. And we now know that Venus has a dense, thick atmosphere, rich in this molecule, which we recognize, I hope, from the last lecture as carbon dioxide, which holds in or traps the radiation which the planet likes to give off to space. Sunlight gets through the atmosphere of Venus, warms up the surface, but the infrared radiation from the surface has difficulty getting out because of the trapping influence of this gas, carbon dioxide, and small quantities of water. This is called a greenhouse effect. 
named after the way a greenhouse is supposed to work, but that isn't the way a greenhouse works, but never mind. It's another mistake rich in the tradition of the subject. Um, Venus is, in fact, at an astonishingly high temperature, 900 degrees Fahrenheit, about 750 degrees Kelvin, even though it's only a little bit closer to the sun than the Earth is. And the greenhouse effect is almost entirely responsible for this high temperature. In addition, the pressure on the surface of Venus is 90 times the pressure in this room. We would be crushed by the pressure of the air on Venus. And the atmosphere, while it is mostly carbon dioxide and has some water, also contains quantities of unpleasant gases like hydrochloric acid, hydrofluoric acid, sulfuric acid, and the like. It's an exceptionally nasty place, and in fact, Venus is very much like the classical description of hell. If you want to know where hell is, it's the surface of Venus. The clouds of Venus, which are very interesting, are composed mostly of concentrated sulfuric acid. And it's not a nice place to go visiting to. Now, despite the, uh, the dense clouds, we are beginning to gain information about the surface of Venus. How can we do that? There are two ways. One is using radar, which penetrates the clouds, strikes the surface, bounces back off the surface to the radio telescope on the Earth. Some places are bright in the radar image, some dark, and we get a picture of the surface of Venus. The other way is to actually land on the surface and take pictures and look around. So an early map of the surface of Venus looks something like the next picture. Uh, you can see some vague, bright markings on the surface. Those are places which like to reflect radar waves. Were we to use a more advanced radar telescope, which has been developed as time goes on, we begin to get close-up details. So here is a portion of uh, the surface of Venus, and we see places which are bright, places which are dark. This place we see here, which is bright, we can look at more closely. And it is a place which has been called Maxwell. Um, many of the bright prominent features on Venus are named after pioneers in the study of electricity and magnetism, because it is electricity and magnetism which is behind the use of radar telescopes. There's another lovely feature named after Michael Faraday, who uh, gave a lecture at six lectures at the Royal Institution at this time, 150 years ago. Why is Maxwell bright? Well, it may be a mountainous area, which reflects radar very well. There are, we think, mountains on Venus, volcanoes, craters, valleys, the configuration of the surface of Venus is just beginning to be understood. The Soviet Union has successfully landed on the surface of Venus, uh, two unmanned spacecraft. This is a photograph taken by Venera 9. And uh, we can see rocks, mottled ground, and away towards the top right what looks like the horizon. There are rocks on the surface of Venus which don't look all that different from the surface of the Earth. That is extraordinary because 